The William Hoy Story Written by Nancy Churin William scooped dust to dry the sweat off his slick rubber ball. He stared at the small X he chalked on the barn. He closed his eyes, he opened them, and he threw. BAM! He hit the mark. He stepped back so that he could try again. His mother waved her arms. She was applauding him. She touched her fingers to her mouth to signal eating. He read her lips as she said, Dinner? William pulled out his pad and pencil. He scribbled, Just a few more? I want to be perfect for tryouts. His mother nodded. His family was passing the mashed potatoes around the table. When William pushed open the door, he read his father's lips telling him to wash up for dinner. He also read his father's lips mouth to his mother. Baseball? His father said, shaking his head, it will never last. Still, William couldn't wait to try out at a school, the Ohio State School for the Deaf. At tryouts, he threw the ball, caught it, he batted, he waited. Eh, too small, the team captain said. William never got much taller than five foot five. He couldn't do anything about that. But maybe they'd give him another chance if he aimed better and ran faster. So every day, after homework and chores, he practiced. One day, William was standing outside the cobbler shop where he fixed shoes, wistfully watching men play baseball in a far field. A foul ball crashed by his feet. With his strong, sure arm, he threw the ball straight into an amazed player's waiting hand. Hey, kid, the player asked. Want to join us? But William couldn't read the player's lips from where he was. So he turned back to work. The man ran to William and tapped his back to get his attention. William whirled around and this time when the man repeated the question, he understood. He scrambled happily to the outfield. William threw the ball smack into the teammates' hands. And when he was up at bat, he sent it soaring so that no one could catch it. What's your name? asked one of the players. William Hoy. William wrote. The man looked at the piece of paper a long time. He seemed to be thinking. Do you want to try out for our team? He asked William at last. William grinned. He sure did. William soon learned that life in the hearing world wasn't easy. Unlike his parents, few people used sign language in the 1880s, and certainly not in baseball. He won a spot on the first team he tried out for, but the manager smirked when he offered William less money than he paid the others. I quit, William told him with his notebook. He quickly found another team. But even 
on his new team, some players talked behind his back. So he wouldn't know what they were saying. Others hid their mouths so they couldn't even read their lips. One day, a pitcher played the meanest trick of all. William let three pitchers go by because he thought that they were balls. He was too far to read the umpire's lips and didn't know they were actually strikes. He stood, gripping his bat, waiting for the next pitch, but the next pitch never came. William was confused, and suddenly the pitcher burst out laughing. He pointed at the fans in the stands laughing too. William's face grew hot. He walked off quickly. He wasn't going to cry, not about baseball, he told himself. He jammed his hand in his pocket, paper crunched against his fist, and he pulled out a letter from his mother. He read again how much she missed him. William missed his family too. He remembered how his mom would raise her arms to applaud him. That's it. William pulled out his pad and drew pictures. He scribbled words next to the pictures he wrote. And he wrote, and he wrote, and he ran to find the umpire. The umpire read William's notes. Yes, that could work, he said. The next time William was at bat. The umpire raised his right hand for a strike and his left for a ball. He used American Sign Language symbols for safe and out. This time, William got on a base. He stole bases. He scored. In his first year in the majors, he led the National League in stolen bases. With his strong, sure arm, he became the first player to throw three base runners out at the plate in one game from the outfield. William taught his teammates signs so that they could discuss plays without the other team hearing. They loved it. The fans enjoyed learning signs too. In those days, before speakers and giant screens, hearing the umpire's calls from the back of the bleachers was hard to do. Now, even the furthest member of the crowd could see the signals. Teams begged for William. He played for several before signing with the Cincinnati Reds. Near his family's farm. William was proud to show his parents that the boy who didn't make the school team. Was one of the most popular players in baseball. When William stepped up to the plate, shaking his bat over his shoulder, fans knew he'd hit or walk away from his first, then swiftly steal his way around the bases. Carefully watching the signals, he led the American League in walks in 1901. He was called the King of Center Field.
because for 10 years, he was ranked among top five outfielders to get it hitters out by catching hard to reach fly balls. After Williams became a star, he thought nothing could surprise him. Then one day when he ran out to the field, Fans waved their arms from the stands just as his mother did when he was a boy. They waved hats too. Williams said he'd never cry about baseball, but he did cry at the sight of death of applause. All he wanted to do since he was a boy was find a way to play his favorite game. He never dreamed he would change how the game was played. But he did, and we still cheer him today.